Welcome to MacroCode. If you're new to this channel, consider subscribing. So for those who have been watching our series, today we are going to continue with our series on .NET MAUI. So as you can see on our app, we have just created our login page and we need to actually proceed with our previous video. So if you are new to this channel, consider subscribing and we actually notice some of you guys are watching our videos and you are not subscribing. So please subscribe so that you are able to help us reach more people. So as you can see on my screen, we have the email address and the password. So if you are new to this channel, there are some videos that we had created and we had actually started with the dashboard. So currently we are now focusing on the logging page, then we should be able to proceed to the uh, dashboard after logging in. So we'll be able to show how you can link this to an API, a login, able to pull some of the data and use it on our mobile app. So this is our login in. So we can actually, you can actually see we have our login in page here. So this is how our form looks like. We have the login to employee app. We have a, a label, then we have our uh, photo. That is the logo. Then we have uh, our text. So we can actually ch change this text. So I'll say color four. So as you can see, my colors, I'm using, uh, my colors are on uh, styles, then under colors. So I have all my colors here. So as you can see, if I just save this, my app should be able to, so let me just do that. Then I relaunch my app. So, so my app is launching. So let's see our screen. So this is how uh, our app, our form looks like. So let me just zoom it. So I'm having the email address and the an entry where we'll be typing our uh, our email address. Then we have our password where we'll be typing our password. Then we'll, we have our button. So let's see there's something. Yeah, so there's something with the colors. So it seems the name is repeated. So I'll just copy that and ensure. So the name should actually be unique based on these. So actually the keys should be unique on the colors. So after you have done that, Let's see how our app will look like. Then we can now bind. So what we had done previously, we had our login form. Then on our login page.zaml.cs, we had binded our login page view model. So on our login page view model, we don't have anything yet. So as you can see, this is how it looks. So we are going now to define how this uh, login page looks like. So what we are going to define is our form we need to when we click on this button uh, save so it is called sign in we should be able to have the data for entry and even that is for email address and the password so we are going to define uh, our fields so what we are going to do come to our login page view model then we need to define our we need to define our our email address and even the password so our app is launching let's see we'll just wait so that you're able to proceed so there we are as you can see our app has launched so we have an employee mobile app our email address and password so we are going to to bind these uh to our login page view model so to to, to proceed we are going to define public uh, stream then i'll say email address email address then i'll just do public then you are going to say stream sorry say stream email address then i'll do this then here we are going to de define the get and setters so i'm going to do this uh, return then it will be email address, then set. Then we need to have set property. So this will be set. So first we need to uh, borrow this local base view model. Then we need to say set property. Then we need to have that. So ref, then we need now to 
close this. So this is our email address. So let's see if the, we have done everything right. Yeah, it should be fine. So I should actually copy this, then we can replicate it with our our password. So I'll just do uh, pass, password. Then I'll have this here, password, password. Then here I'll say password. So let me just zoom it so that you can be able to see. So this is password. <clears throat> so I'm going to bind these to my, to my form. So I'm going to come here to my uh, email address. Then I'm going to say text. Then I'm going to define it and say binding. Then I'll have this as text. Then also for the password, I'll say text. Then I'm going to define that. Then I'll say binding. Then I'm going to say password. So we have actually done that. So the next thing that you're going to do is uh, to define the button, the save button. So the, the save button will come here, then we'll do. So we can do public, public async. So we can do public async task. So this is where we'll be now logging in. So you can say, you can say, let's say, uh, so you can say, login or you can, let me just do it. Let, let me just use I command. So I can say I command, private I command. Then you can say login command. So login command. Sorry, so I'll just do away with that. Then you can just say login command. Then we do this. So here we need to proceed and say, you can do this. You can do this. Then we say login command. We do that, then we say login command is equals to new, then command, then we say async. We do that, then we say do that, then we say await, then to call this function execute, you can call execute login async so this is a function so if we do that so we can actually copy this and we have it here then we do that then this one we should be able to close it so login command this should be so we should actually all right, we should actually do this. So this will be that way. So define it that way. Then this one should be, can have it as login. So this should be login command, or you can have it as underscore login. Then have this underscore, then this underscore, then should be fine. So if we do that, we can actually do this as public. So this will be our command. So if this button is clicked, it should be able to execute this function execute login so if uh, execute login is clicked then we should be able to uh, login in so this is where now our button should come so we need to bind in our we need to bind our our button to on on the login page we need to bind this here we say uh, command command then you can say bind then you can have that as the login page. So one thing that you can also do uh, down here, we can actually have activity indicator. So you'll we'll say that, then we say uh, height request, you can define height, then we can also say is visible, is 
is visible is visible then you can leave that then i'll show you how we can then is running you can also leave that then you can close so to make sure this activity is running we want the activity indicator to be running only when login command is clicked so to do that let's define some boolean here so we'll come here and say we'll call this bool then we'll say is uh, running then i can be is running so this bool so we can call this is running then you can have this is running here then we can now copy this is running then we bind it to our activity so we can say binding binding then is running so whenever we just set is running to true then our activity should be able to uh show, should, we should be able to see the activity indicator running so when we come to our logging page whenever this uh, command that is the logging command is clicked the first thing that we need to do we need to we need to uh, to say if we actually need to see if it is running if the is running is true then we need to return there is an activity going on so so that is the first thing the next thing is to actually if this is not running then before you proceed we set this to true so whenever we just click this then our app will be uh, running now the next thing so if, if we just launch our app we can test that we see how it is working so if you're new to this channel guys we are just proceeding with the logging logging in screen of our .NET maui mobile app so so that is it let's wait and see so this is our logging in so if we just type in uh, something here then we type in then whenever we click whenever we click sign in we should be able to see yeah you see uh something is not going on well so let's see if it is uh, coming here so if we click sign in so that's the issue so let's just see let's just see this command so our command is logging button so let me just replace here so what we need to check is on our xaml.cs yes so on our xaml.cs let's change something so here let's change how we binded this then we initialize this to new then we have this that way so so if we change this we should be able to uh, get the data so we just uh, let's see let's launch our app and see yes so if we just type in our email then type in the password if we click this you can see our command is now working and we should be able to now see the data so but now we have not uh, checked anything so you can see we have our progress bar loading uh, showing that something is going on but before we do anything we need to actually check if uh, we have the we have the we have the uh, data captured by the user but the first thing that we need to do we can actually check if the email address and the password has been provided to do that let's just uh check here so we'll just check if so we'll just check if string that is null or empty then that is our email address so if that that is null then we can we can actually uh display an an alert so let's just copy what we had done somewhere else so we can copy this alert 
So if we just have it on our login screen, so you can see, you can say email address missing email address. Then we can just alert the user to uh, please provide valid email address. Then after we have done that, then we provide an OK button. So that is for the email address. Then we can do the same for, for the password. So here we we'll actually use email address. Then here we can now use password. So you can see missing password. So we can then here, sorry, just this should be please provide a valid email address. Then this should be please provide a valid uh, password. So if that is that is done, then we should be able to get our values. So if we just lo launch our screen again, and whenever before that, whenever we get an error, we should actually uh, switch off our activity indicator. So we'll just do that, then just say false. Then you can do that. Then you can also save this as false. So if you do that, then we can launch our screen. So if we just type in the email address, then the password. Then if you click save, you're able to see that. So let's just see. Sorry. So let's see. So if we just provide the password, then you click save, then we should be able to see our data. So for the email, you can see we have some text. For the password, we also have some password. So that is how you actually do that. So to actually, if we just provide this as null, just type in and click OK. Remember our activity is still running. So this will actually uh, be returned. So you can see nothing is being done. So to stop that, we can close that. Then we can start our app. So you can see, so you can just put in test. So if we leave this, assuming we leave this and just click save, we should be able to get an error. So you can see missing email address, please provide valid email address. So if you click OK, it will also check the password, missing uh, password, please provide valid password. So the challenge with that is if we just click that, it will be showing in case you have a lot of uh, uh, checks, it will be showing each of the error until you, you complete. So if I click that, you see missing email address, please provide valid email address. But now it should give me this error and exit. But if I click OK, it will proceed to the next error. You see, missing password, please provide va valid password. Assuming you have a very long form with these kind of alerts. So you will be actually be moving from one error to another. So to prevent that, we are going to do this. So inside here, you just uh, use a return. Then here, you also say a return. So it will actually, whenever it reaches there, then the app will exit. So you will not be able to see the other errors. So let's see. So if I click OK, you see missing email address, please provide valid email address. So if I click OK, then our app will actually uh, exit automatically. So that is it, guys, for today. So on our next video, we are going to create an API that we'll be using now to communicate with our mobile app. For now, please subscribe and keep posted for our next series. See you.